Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be the next episode in my You Do Not Need That series, where I am going to be talking you out of buying all of these new and upcoming tempting makeup releases. So if you are on a no buy, if you are on a low buy, if you're trying to cut back on the amount of makeup that you purchase, if you're trying to save money, but you feel tempted, by all of these shiny new things, then this is the video for you. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so diving straight in, let's look at this Chanel Spring Collection. This is a classic throw everything at our eyeballs type of collection, isn't it? We've got pops of color, we've got a lot of embossing and patterns, we've got a lot of sparkle and shine, we've got a lot of limited edition, bye 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 quick before it's gone all of the tactics thrown at this collection to lure and tempt us in and it's kind of working a lot of us are tempted by it i'm actually wearing the blue rivage quad from this collection today and that is the one product that i plan to pick up from this collection i picked that up because i was able to get it quickly and it would be good for me to review it early here on my channel Otherwise, I'm pretty sure I would have skipped this entire collection and I don't currently plan to pick anything else up from this collection. I have seen swatches of that very glorious looking blush duo and I don't want it. I have these built-in expectations that Chanel blushes are always going to be wow factor and glorious. I don't think this blush duo is. It looks like both of these blushes in here are at least like natural, if not matte finish blushes. There's no glow and luminosity that we usually expect and see a lot of from Chanel. Certainly not a noticeable amount and they both look very blah to me. Both of these blush shades in here look very like, hmm, Okay, if you bought the Healthy Glow ones from the Winter collection, I just don't think that this is at all necessary for anyone. There's nothing wow factor about these blushes. They look really pretty with the split pan and the swirly whirly pattern. That's literally where the gloriousness ends. And you can bet your life that's going to be really expensive blush. That's really not going to wow you or give you a lot of joy. And if we're gonna spend that amount of money on makeup, it's got to give us joy. It's got to be something we really love and enjoy and get a lot of use out of that's not going to be that that's going to fall very flat i think a lot of people will be disappointed by it you don't want to be one of those people leave it alone it's not that special i don't think it's as beautiful and pretty as it looks on paper the highlighter <laughs> Chanel did not get the memo. Again, I've seen swatches of this highlighter and initially when I saw just this picture of the product, I thought, oh, I need it, I want it, it's glorious, it's so beautiful. But then I saw the swatches and it's a sparkly, glittery, topper shade a mess yet again chanel did not get the memo when we told them that the lighter shade doesn't have to be different from the others those chanel highlighters that we've just literally have sold out now that were the limited edition they're never going to come to our country we're never going to be able to get our hands on them that then were here for months and months until they started to sell out and i think they're still mostly available now with the you know the symbols collection with all the different colors for some reason the lighter shade the others were smooth and shine luminous subtle highlighters the lighter shade for some reason with this sparkly glittery like eyeshadow topper texture and this is this it looks exactly the same very sparkly very shimmery very light and glittery very icy if you bought the symbols one don't buy this, you've already got it. If you thought I don't want the symbols one because you heard it was sparkly and glittery, this one is too. You don't need it. You could go into any of your Pat McGrath palettes and get one of the topper shades and whack that on your cheek and you're gonna get the same glittery sparkly mess that you desire. So I would skip on all of this. The other products are not even worth our time looking at because they're literally very basic lipstick colors that we already have. We are not amateurs here. We are the advanced class in makeup saving and rejection and those very average lipstick colors are not even worth us discussing. We know we don't need those. We're not even thinking about them. The eyeshadows are a little tempting. Maybe you think, oh, that like summery color one, that's something that Chanel hasn't really done, but everybody else has, okay? That is literally pinks 
citrary pinks in a quad. We've got dozens of those. Pat McGrath's brought out 400 of them in just the last 12 months. We've got Natasha Denona, we've got Charlotte Tilbury. We don't need one that just says Chanel on it just because it's slightly different to the other 46 that they've already released. Okay, we don't need any of this. Next up, let's talk about these Yves Saint Laurent bronzes. I think I got a bit excited about these because of the packaging. This packaging is so beautiful. It's like a mini handbag, but it's not a mini handbag. It's a bronzer, all right? You can't put anything in there you'll break it. These all look very red toned to me. They look very sort of classic warm toned bronzer, which we've got a million of. You know, I think at this point, if you want to spend a lot of money on a bronzer, and these will be expensive, especially with that really luxurious packaging, we want something we don't already have 16 of in our drawers. We want something that's maybe a bit of a special finish, a really gorgeous, soft, glowing finish. Something like that might be a bit different to what we already have. A matte bronzer that's very warm or very red or very orange. We have been like seeing for years and years. We've already got this. I will also tell you right now, my prediction is that this year is going to be the year of bronzers. I think we're going to see a lot of new bronzers from brands. I've already seen a couple sneak peeked that are more exciting than this. I think if you run out and spend a lot of money on this bronzer because it's like exciting and it's got the handbag packaging, you're going to regret it because right around the corner, more exciting bronzers are coming. I promise you, we're gonna see a lot of bronzers this year. This is not the one to lose our marbles over and our money and our paycheck. There's more coming, okay? There's more coming. You know, they're giving us the skin... I mean, where does the line end? They're giving us skincare claims for a bronzer now, a bronzer that's going on top of skincare, SPF, primer, foundation, concealer, maybe even powder, and you're telling me that those skincare ingredients in the bronzer are going to do what exactly? Probably make it not wear as well, to be honest. There's no need for skincare and bronzers, I promise you. So definitely ignore that claim for starters, but I promise these are not going to be the best bronzers of the year. They might have the sexiest packaging, but what's inside I think is gonna be very average. It's not going to be worth us running out. We've got bronzers, you know, we can use the ones we've got until one that's really exciting and different comes along. A different tone that we don't really have that isn't seen a lot, different different finish that we don't have a lot of. A warm toned red orange bronzer powder formula, very expensive with a fancy package on it, is not where we're spending our money, okay? It's too early in the year for that. Next up, Dior are releasing some new luminizing line products. <laughs> We've got the Forever Glow Maximizers, which are a liquid highlighter in varying different shades that can be used as blush, bronzer, or highlighter, depending on your skin tone and the shade that you choose. And we've also got the Star Filter, which is, I think, Dior's answer to Charlotte Tilbury's Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's a liquid, like, priming, multitasking product with a lot of glow and luminosity in it. Those are two of the most tempting products that are coming along in the next few weeks. These should be launched online any day. I think they're already available in various different countries, but they're coming any minute. So brace yourselves because these, again, these are very tempting products. They look very beautiful. They've got a lot of glow and shine. They're trying to tell us it's multitasking. So you think, well, it's free, isn't it? Because you're getting like four products in one. So it's basically free. <sighs> It's not free, it's very expensive, actually. I think if you really like these type of products, they're really tempting. For everybody else, if you don't really love, you know, liquid highlighters, these might be luring you in because it's the promise of a blush and a highlighter in one. And if you're lazy like me, you think, well, that's time saved you know, but I think these are really only going to work for specific people. If you're one of these like Hailey Bieber type of girls who's like a dot of concealer here and then a little bit of one of these luminizers there and a bit of lip gloss and you're good to go, that's who would actually use these, I think, frequently and get a lot of use out of these products. If you're like a makeup girly and you're doing like foundation concealer like me, on the daily. I feel like these are just, these are gonna fall by the wayside. These aren't gonna get a lot of use. They're kind of neither here nor there. They're too pigmented on a lighter skin tone to just be a highlighter because they are going to leave quite a bit of color. So you're gonna have to be careful. You can't put it on your forehead if it's pink. 
you know you can't put it down the bridge of your nose if it's brown or orange that's going to look bonkers so you're gonna to have to strategically use these depending on your skin tone and if you have a deeper skin tone then that you're not really going to get the color payoff so then it's just going to be a highlighter a liquid highlighter on you because you're not going to really get the benefit of the color if you have a deeper skin tone from most of these highlighters none of them are really deep enough to give a really deep skin tone a gorgeous amount of blush so i don't think they're necessarily as multitasking as they might be making out and then we've got what looks like dior's answer to charlotte tilbury's hollywood flawless filter everyone's trying to do it if you have the original you have the best one you don't need a pretender or a new one coming along that probably like all of the others that came before is just not as good as the original charlotte tilbury in my humble opinion you 100 must wait for reviews because i think if you have been drawn to these types of products before you will already have some they last a long time you know you don't it's not like a mascara you don't go through it in a couple of months these sort of mix in with your foundation use underneath use as a primer a bit of glow on the top type of products last a really long time so i'm sure if you like them that you probably have some sitting in your drawer that you haven't used and i don't think this is going to be wildly different or better than the ones you've already got the most likely thing that's going to happen is it's not going to be as good as the ones you already have or it's just going to be the same in which case you'll regret not using just what you had and saving your money on something different that you don't actually already have that does something a bit more noticeable for your money this is something that hides you know it's going to be really expensive and it's something that hides underneath other products that's very subtle if seen at all once you've done your makeup it's not where you want to put your hard-earned money it's not a priority in the big scheme of things it's not going to make as much of a difference as a banging lipstick or a beautiful foundation this is a subtle like bonus product it's not a necessary part of anyone's makeup routine it's like am i going to notice if i look at my own face really close up in a magnifying mirror it's that type of product. No one's going to see this across the room. You can live without it. Next, let's talk about these incoming Tom Ford eyeshadow quads. These are apparently for spring. They'll be online if they're not already any day. Now, iconic smoke and ember bronze. I think here's the thing. If you're anything like me, you see these images of a Tom Ford quad and they look like they might be something other than honeymoon and what is the other one that is constantly released released something about seduction is it I don't know but there's two that just get repackaged and brought out for every single collection in a slightly different colored compact because these don't look like either of those you think oh my it's something new from Tom Ford. I must have it. It's wildly different to anything I've got. But on closer inspection, is it though? Is it though? Or did you just think that because it's just not that exact same colour story we've had rolled out for the last 10 years in different colours? We've got distracted. He's thrown us off because it's actually something different to what he's been releasing over and over again. But the reality is, is this is a snaky eye and a warm tone palette and tell me you don't already have a smoky eye and a warm toned palette. I think you do. Don't you lie to me, okay? We're friends. Friends don't lie to each other. I think if this was a different brand, we might be getting something a bit more wow factor, but Tom Ford, regardless of the color stories, is quite an understated, softer, elegant, eyeshadow kind of guy, okay? That's where, I don't think he makes these himself, by the way. I don't really see Tom with, you know, the blue shoe covers and matching hairnet, like, you know, mixing pigments up in the lab. I don't know, maybe he does do that. I can't see it myself. But his brand tends to typically lean very understated, elegant, very soft. Therefore, it's not going to be as impactful and different of a colour story as it might look in this image. This looks like it could be very lilac. It's sort of a denim purpley blue. It's very exciting. Actually, the swatches are, oh wait, no, it's, it's pretty underwhelming actually. It's not that exciting. It's just because it's different to Tom Ford's last 15 palettes that we thought it was exciting. It's not really. It's not really. We've got these colours over and over again. It's a kind of 
purpley smoky eye and then it's a warm toned palette. I mean even Ember Bronze, they've tried to call it something that sounds really exciting and smoky but that literally looks the same as about six of his other palettes. We all just saw it and thought oh, he's really something new and got excited but calm down and actually think about it and digest it. This is one to have a cooling off period for because the initial reaction is excitement and then it quickly dawns on you that it's not exciting actually it's fine we can do without it. It's going to be like £70 for four eyeshadows. It's not £70 for four exciting it's like £70 for 20 or £30 for four exciting. That's the level of exciting that we're dealing with here. You don't need those cool off for a good couple of weeks. I don't think these will sell out overnight. I think they'll be around for a couple of weeks. And if you give it a week, I think you'll have moved on with your life and found something more exciting that's actually £70 exciting, maybe even £80 exciting. Who could tell? It is 2024 after all. Next up, let's talk about Pat McGrath's Heart's Desire collection. I don't know, this is a little late to the game. I realised this came out while I was away for my 40th. So I didn't talk about it instantly when it came out, but I did pick up the highlighter and two of the lipsticks. The highlighter is nice. I don't think it's the best that Pat McGrath has ever made. I think I prefer her permanent highlighter line that has been around for a very long time that you can get for 50% off if you really want it, if you haven't already picked it up. If you do own her permanent highlighters or her Divine Glow highlighter, those are better. You don't need this one. Those are nicer than this one. I think this is like a prettily packaged presented highlighter. I don't think it's worth the extra money. I think her permanent highlighters are better, cheaper and around at your leisure and usually about 50% off. The lipsticks are Pat's existing matte trance formula. Again, they've whacked a pretty print on it and it looks really exciting and really stunning and oh my god, I need that look at the picture. But actually as a lipstick, it's a matte nude and a richer, deeper sort of berry nude. Um, what are you doing? No, we've already got those. And don't even think about the eyeshadow quad. Did you know that that is repackaged from her holiday collection? Did you know that? That is still sitting there. Gone are the days when Pat McGrath collections, like we had to be there, like refreshing a bit to be allowed to like buy it in the utter state of despair and panic. Those days are gone, okay? Her limited editions are going to be reduced in a few months time, 50% off. They're sitting there. No one's running out and losing their marbles. I will. It literally waited in, until it came to Selfridges and that was for review purposes. I wasn't even rushing out to review it because I knew people wouldn't be that interested in it. This is already existing you already rejected these when they were in the big holiday palette you don't need these they've whacked out the least popular shades that they were left over with at the end and they've put it in a new quad and said it's valentine's day but we'd rather be taken for dinner give us a glass of champagne some scallops maybe a bit of steak and a creme brulee <laughs> yes i'd rather do that next up let's talk about these new charlotte tilbury lipsticks i mean Look me in my eyeballs and tell me you don't have enough Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. I am guilty. I'm the guiltiest when it comes to Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. I have a whole drawer full of them. They're lovely, but I have a lot of them. I have so many of them. I already have these shades, okay? These are new shades, but are they? Are they though? Pinks, roses, reds from Charlotte Tilbury. Does that sound familiar? Have you looked in your drawer at this Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks you already have and thought, wait, do I already have these colours? Because I think you do. I think we all do. And if you don't, you probably have them from Lisa Eldridge. If you don't, you probably have them from Pat McGrath. If you don't, you probably have them from YSL. These are pinks, roses, reds what's happening? Why are we telling ourselves these are new? This is another case where we've been starved. Charlotte Tilbury has not released like a whole lipstick collection for a long time. We've been starved of it. And so when she released a whole load of shades, oh my God, we lost our minds and we wanted to buy like five of them. That definitely happened to me. I don't know about anybody else. But again, cooling off period, okay. You've got plenty of time to buy these if you still want them later or when you've thought about it, when you've looked for your drawers and decided, wait, 
wait, I think I already have these shades. Oh, I had these, I don't really wear them. When you've gone through that whole process, they'll still be sitting there, okay? And maybe then you might think I only need one of these or I'll try one, I'll put one on my birthday list. I believe I've seen that we have Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, new lipsticks coming very soon, a new formula she said actually. I saw her reply to a comment on Instagram saying she has a whole new formula coming. I am personally much more excited about that because one new formula, we've been waiting a long time for Lisa lipsticks, we know how Lisa does colour, you know, if you don't want to spend all your money on Charlotte Tilbury slightly different shades to the ones you have in your drawers and then have Lisa come out with brand new formulas and stuff we don't have. Okay, remember there's just always something more exciting around the corner and if you've already spent your lipstick budget for the month, what are you gonna do, you know? There is always something more exciting coming, I'm telling you. Next up, let's talk about this ABH highlighter. Oh, this looks very, very attractive, doesn't it? With that gorgeous picture on the front, lovely red shiny packaging. You know, it's the year of the dragon. Maybe that's your birth year. So it's feeling very like it's meant to be. It's fated that this highlighter is going to be the most glorious thing you've ever put on your face. But hold your horses. I think the way they sold this really got me going. It was described as having ultra beam effect, smooth finish, perfect radiance, hybrid baked powder gel formula, wet effect shine. All of this was making me think this is going to be right up my street. And then I started to see the swatches and it just looks like literally any other highlighter. And I was quite disappointed. I really thought this was going to be stunning. I don't think it's that great. I don't think it looks particularly different or special at all. I think it looks a very average highlighter. It's not especially subtle and smooth as far as what I'm seeing. So don't get lured in by the description. I think brands are really cottoning on to our buzzwords and what we're looking for when it comes to highlighter now. And they're just using them to sell highlighters that don't really tick those boxes. I think this is going to be one that people are, are kind of disappointed in. I, I don't see people being wowed by this. And it's not cheap, it's $38. And the shade I think is going to be a tricky one. It's an iridescent white pearl with a pink shift. I think this is going to be one that if you don't have maybe a fair to light skin tone, it's probably going to look a little gray and pull a little off on the skin. So be careful, wait for reviews, look at swatches. I don't think it's necessarily going to live up to that glorious description. Next up, let's talk about the Natasha Denona Berry Pop Collection. I picked up the cheek palette and the lipstick and I liked the cheek palette, but let me tell you, it's terrifying to use. It is so pigmented. Those blushes are so pigmented. You either have to have a deeper skin tone to be able to use these without caution, throwing caution to the wind, or you've got to be really careful, really strategic, go really easy. It's so, so easy to end up very clown cheek. In fact, it's quite hard not to. You know, you really have to go very careful, really have to be very strategic, very careful in your application, really go easy because they are so pigmented. It's, it's quite the look. If you even just dab a sponge, ooh, ooh, you know, it's, it's, tricky to, to get the balance right with the product. So I think if you have a fair to light to light medium skin tone, it's gonna be more hassle than it's worth. It's gonna be a lot of work unless you absolutely head over heels, love that color story and those colors of blush. I don't think it's going to be worth the time and the effort. And I think for that reason, it's going to just languish in your drawers because it's not as easy to use and carefree to, just throw at your cheeks as a lot of your other products. You're really gonna have to take the time and effort to make it work. And the lipstick I found really unflattering. I had really dry lips when I was using this and testing it out and it was like taken on a different color where my lips were dry and just it was just not looking good. So if you don't have perfectly smooth, juicy, hydrated, glorious kitten lips, then I don't think it's gonna do you any favors. So be careful, because I think, again, this is something that's very alluring, it's very beautiful to look at, and it's easy to get sucked in without thinking, am I really gonna use that? How often? Because again, something more exciting is always around the corner that might suit you more, that might be easier for you to use, that might look better on your skin tone. Cooling off period.
So there you have it. Those are all of the most tempting makeup releases that are either coming up right around the corner or are already available to us. Hopefully you found this video helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.